will have a baptism ceremony and people will be sharing their testimonies. So I'll give them three minutes per person. So that is three times seven is what? 21. 21, right? So, um, you know, and plus or minus one or something like that. And it's going to be maybe 30 minutes. And which is the good news because I get to speak sh shorter. And my wife says, oh, I need just make it short and simple. You know, sweet. Right? It's like being short and sweet and simple. <laughs> <laughs> so I have uh, maybe like a, like a two-point sermon. And um, one point I'm going to do right now. And uh, later, when we do baptism, I'm going to give you another point, just for people who are getting baptized. Let me make some announcements. Um, uh, we have many, many, many announcements today, but I'm going to go them quickly. And first, he's not there? Yeah, I want to see it first. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> so today's the resurrection day. Hallelujah. We don't have small groups today, and but after this one, we're going to go over there and eat lunch together. All right? So next one is, uh, today we're going to go to um, one of the villages over here, which is the, is a place for, uh, where old people live. You know, then we're going to go there and do some Easter caroling, not Christmas caroling. And like someday you're going to get old, and you're going to appreciate people coming to you and visit you and sing to you and remind them the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we need to do that this afternoon. We're going to practice at 1 o'clock, and we're going to go there at 2.30 p.m. The next one is that uh, two Sundays from today, uh, Hamilton, Elizabeth, and I, we're going to go to Seattle, Washington, and here, Robbie Zachariah Ooh. doing the little apologetics for us, and we're going to come and share with you guys, uh, and uh, he's going to teach us the worldview apologetics uh, in this conference in Seattle. So, um, L, who has been our missionary for more than 30 years. And L, Edna, would you stand? Yeah. And <laughs> we've been in, in, in the field, um, call it the field, more than 30 years. And I know some of you guys are not even 30 years old, old yet, so they've been there for a long time, and they recently went to Chad and came back, and they're going to share it with us what God has been doing and, you know, kind of give you a little bit of vision of what, how you guys can participate in the things that God is doing all around the world. In May, it's an exciting month, isn't it? You know, the reason is that I think this is our fourth year uh, we've been serving our homeless community in San Luis Obispo. And did you know that there's more than 3,000 people, 3,000 homeless people in our county? And more than half of them are under the age of 18. So that's one of the reasons that we got rid of the pew. Not that because we didn't like the orange and bright, you know, I like <laughs> orange, you know. We got rid of it in order to put the chairs on, right? And that we can turn this place right here into a place where they can come and sleep for a whole month of May. So we do that every day and people come and, you know, uh, usually families and children and uh, you know, women that come and sleep, and we can minister unto them. We can pray for them. We can be Jesus' feet and Jesus' hand while they're here in the whole month of May. And so we don't do our Sunday service here. We do Sunday service over there. So we need a lot of volunteers and help, and especially people come to minister upon them, pray for them, be Jesus' hand and Jesus' feet to them. So uh, Elizabeth, uh, would you stand wherever you are? She is our coordinator. And so she needs a lot of help and you know, even, even praying for her and so talk to her how you can help. We're going to pass out uh, sign-up sheets where you can come between 6 to 9 because 9 o'clock is the lights out and they'll be all sleeping. So you guys can still come and pray for them. Uh, but uh, from 6 to 9, we encourage you to come to mingle with them, talk to them, pray for them, and you know, play with the kids and be their friends. All right? So we get to do that. And we have a great news. Last Friday, last Friday, Natalie Doherty became a Natalie Doherty. She was a Natalie something else. And, and, and they went through the adoption process. And uh, we were at the courthouse. And it was very moving. I almost cried. You know, and it was very moving when the judge was talking about all these and 
what a wonderful family Melissa and Shane, you know, they, they have and how God has entrusted her to their household and has continued to pray for Melissa. Where's Melissa and Shane? Yeah. Okay, you can stand up too, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they can see you. Yeah, there you go. And uh, we have a couple of pictures after that, I think, hopefully. One more? Oh, we, we had pictures. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, you can just see them online. You know, so <laughs> yeah, so that was my last announcement. And uh, today is Resurrection Day, and I'm going to share with you from... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Bless you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 14. I'm going to read it. I'm going to give you a couple of points from there. And we will have a... Testimonies, uh, this time I didn't record the testimonies. Uh, you know, one of the reasons is because we got so busy in like the last couple of weeks, and uh, usually we do a little bit early. So, And also we have seven people, and I wanted the people to hear. See, when you watch something through the video, you don't really get to see their their passion for the Lord. You know? And so we wanted to um, really share how God has worked in their lives, and for you to be impacted the passion they have for the Lord. And I want you to feel that. That's why I didn't record it. It was all intentional, all right? It's not that because I got lazy. Mm -hmm. So I want you to, there were seven people doing testimony. And after their testimony, we will, uh, I will give a maybe one pointer sermon to all of them. Then we'll have offering. And while you have offering, we go there and change. Then we'll do the baptism. And we'll have last song. And we'll go over to eat, all right? Okay, let me read to you. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, then last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. By His grace, to me was not if without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what I, what we preach, and this is what we believe, what you believe. But if you, if, if it is preached, it, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. You know, this is one of those passages that talks about the gospel. Everybody say gospel. Gospel, gospel. gospel means good news. You know, whenever you go to uh, places where there are lots of Christians, and you know, I went to Africa, and there is a store named Gospel Everything, Gospel Dry Cleaner, Gospel Mini Mart, Gospel you know, Hardware Store. Uh, it's just kind of strange to hear that kind of thing. In one sense, it's kind of good, but one sense is, 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 is not so good. 
right? And you know, I, I went to Cal Poly in 1990s, many, many, many moons ago. We didn't have all the parking lot. We had like horse carriages, you know, so we had to ride our horses to Cal Poly. Uh, I'm just kidding. But you know, we, we, you know, it was a long time ago, and I was not a Christian when I went to Cal Poly. And so my dad died when I was very young, and I always wondered what happens when we die. Right? And so you do this comparison. What does Christianity say? What does Buddha say? What does Islam say? You know, so in comparing religion, I found out the biggest difference between Christianity and all the other religion is in this word. Done versus do. See, all these other religions is about doing. Doing this, doing this harder, doing this better, so that we can get to God. See, God and us, we are this far apart, so by trying to do this, trying to live harder, trying to live better, uh, having better philosophy, you know, living a wiser life so that we can get to God. But Christianity is not like that, right? Christianity is about done. It's not done about what we have done, but what God has done. But a lot of times we try to make Christianity into like other religions. Do this. You do this. You do the better. It's not like that at all. It's about what God has done. Something amazing news about Christ. Something amazing that what God has done that brings significant change in the way that we live. Amen? You know, this is a historical, world-changing event that affects everyone everywhere and every period of time. Every, every period of history. You know, it's like God is giving you, God has given you the gift. So we take the gift and we enjoy it. Right, amen? Yeah. God has cooked us a nice meal. Then what do you do? Just look at it? Like, wow. The smell? No. Whatever. You eat it. You enjoy it every bite. Right? God has given you a way for us to be with Him. So we do, we walk the path that God has given us. We enjoy His presence forever and ever and ever. Amen. It's not like working for the Lord. It's enjoying Him forever. Amen. Because of what He has done. Do you understand that? It is a news. That's why gospel is the big news. It is a big news. It's a Jesus, the Son of God, coming to this world dying for our sins, to pay for our sins, because God is a righteous God, and shows us how much He loves us, how much He is for us. And by resurrecting, gives us this big news of our history. That is the big news of our history. This big news that deserves to be preached. Do you notice the, all these words about preaching? Preaching? And then think about it. When before Bible was written, and God is, you know, I don't know if God thinks or not, but then God is trying to, right, God is connecting with Paul, trying to write all these New Testament books. What the word that we should use in Christian communication? How, how do we say it? Should we say about teaching or giving them more wisdom? But what is it? God has chosen us this word, preach. Then when we say preach, some of you guys, oh yeah, yeah, you got a preacher. You got a big voice, you know? A small body, but big voice. You don't need a microphone, you know? You just can yell like crazy. But yeah, sure. Because it is a good news. Because it is a news that changes everything about me, changes about the, everything about you, changes everything about the world. If God uses the word preach, you understand that? To proclaim, to herald. You know, Olden days, 2,000 years ago, I'm going to take you back 2,000 years ago, right? You know, now we get the news from everywhere, newspaper, TV, internet, right? And so you're kind of confused because everything makes the news, right? Oh, Cal Poly students going on a roof, right, and then doing something. You know, that made the world news, you know, did you know that? I was having lunch in Korea, you know, one of the professors I was having lunch with, he goes, oh, did you hear in some university there were some college students on the roof? You know? <laughs> and the, the, the whole thing came down. I was like, oh, that's from our city. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we get all kinds of news and get confused. What is the big news and what is the small news? Yeah, right. You know, sometimes we... We send each other articles. Oh, 17 
ways how you should not make tea. You know? <laughs> Ten ways how to handle your stress. Right? Christianity is not about that. We we'll get the small news and big news so mixed up. And small news becomes the big news. And big news just disappears everywhere. We live according to the small news. That's why there's no life transformation. It's all about trying better. Try to handle your stress. Don't worry. You know, if you read books about not worrying, first thing tell you, worrying doesn't help. Who doesn't know that? We all know that. <laughs> you can write a book about worrying, you know? Why herald? Why proclaim? Because back then, this news that changes everything was heralded by the king's servants. Kings will come, hear ye, hear ye! Or whatever they use, you know? <laughs> that was supposed to be a trumpet sound, you know? <laughs> right? And so the king's edict! The king says, now there's double the tax! You know, something like that, right? That changes everything. You don't pay your tax, you're gonna put it in jail. So what the king says, whatever the news comes out from the king, which is the big news, that news will change the way we live. And that's the same word. That's the herald that word that God uses to tell us about this gospel. This was the big news. This is the big news. And that is why God used this word in Christian communication. Our communication has to be about the big news. Because this big news changes everything about our lives. It changes your wisdom. It changes how you handle stress. It changes how you, how you do even your schooling. Right? Because before I was a Christian, what do we do? We try to get the best grade ever. Even to cheating. Right? And a lot of stress about getting good grades. We, we do that. But then after becoming a follower of Christ, you do not want to do anything that goes against the character of God. Somehow, the God's character, God resides in us, and He tells us, like, whatever we do, we do it for the glory of God. You see, when you minimize Christianity to this way of life, it becomes just like other religion. It becomes just about teaching. It's about wisdom. Yes, it has a way of life. It has teaching. It has wisdom. But primarily, right, did you catch the word? Primarily, the first importance, it is the news that how Jesus came and died and rose again. That news changes. The fact that Jesus came and died and rose again changes everything. It changes the way we live. It changes the wisdom. It changes how you compete. It changes how you treat your wife. It changes how you treat your husband. It changes how you treat your kids. It changes how you treat your neighbor. It changes even how you treat your, you know, the neighbor that you really don't like. How you treat your enemies even. This is the big news that Jesus was raised from the dead. It gives how we can handle stress. But it is not about handling stress. But it is about the big news. But that news changes how we handle stress, how we handle worries, how we deal with parents. Because this is the big news. Preach it. Preach it with confidence that this news guarantees transformation in our life. That's why Paul says, I preach nothing but Christ crucified. That news will change us. Right? And also he can be confident because if you don't believe me, go talk to Peter. Because Peter is alive. Or well, back then Peter was alive. If you don't believe Peter, go talk to James. Because they didn't believe Jesus resurrected either. That's why they went back fishing. They were hiding in their upper room. But how Jesus went to them and appeared to them. Go talk to Peter. Go even talk to 500 people. And some of them, yes, they have died, but most of them are still alive. I'm serious. That's what our Paul is saying. Right? You know, a lot of times like, when you read the words, you don't hear the passion. But you get the passion, Paul is saying, like, I'm serious, this news will change your life. Go talk to all these guys. That's why we can preach with confidence. 
This Paul can back it up with this witnesses of people still alive, telling them about this big news of Jesus Christ. This big news of resurrection changes everything. You know, without resurrection, you know, this Bible tells us our preaching is useless. Your faith is even useless. This life is pointless and really sad without the resurrection. It's like asking you this. You know, uh, I ask you, what is your favorite activity? What do you love to do? Name something. Singing. Singing. Yeah, then it's like saying, okay, I can let you sing 15 minutes, and I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and what would you say? Like, for like me, I said, kill me now. Why, why wait 15 minutes? Right? Right? You get to enjoy something for 15 minutes, and like you're watching the place at 9 o'clock, at 10, 15 right now, or 10.35, I get to sing 15 minutes. And would you be thinking about seeing how you enjoy about that? No, you'd be thinking about, in, in 12 minutes, or in 11 minutes, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. That's what the Bible says that we are under the slavery of fear of death. Because there's, there's this death to us that we are going to die. We are going to die. That's why later in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul confronts death this way. He, in a way, taunts death this way. He says, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks to be God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And if I was an NFL referee, taunting 15 yards! <coughs> because that's not his thing. You know, you see that? You know, like, you, what, what is your thing? Because Jesus has overcome the death. Jesus has conquered the death. And so therefore, my brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in, not in vain because Jesus rose again. That's how Paul is saying. I know you have tried to give me that, but trying to get me makes me get stronger because Jesus has rose again. And I too will rise on the day, on that day, trumpet sounds in the most glorious way. I know the final score, so I don't worry. Because in that day, I can handle problems, I can handle stress, I can handle little bumps on the road here and there. Because death has been conquered by Jesus Christ, and we too will conquer following Jesus, Jesus Christ. You know, I, one thing I used to struggle was, Failure. Failure. You know, trying something like trying to share Christ, I don't want to fail. I want to be successful like 10 out of 10 times in anything I do. But knowing that this could fail, what happened? You don't want to do it. Because somehow I thought like, oh, I don't want to make Jesus look bad. Right? So let's not even try it. Uh, that was my mentality. But then, knowing that Jesus rose again, you can't fail. Failing is okay. Because Jesus has overcome death. You know? I mean, what's the worst thing can happen to you? Die. <laughs> but to us, dying is what? Gain. Because we get to be with Christ. Because Christ is the most valuable person in the whole wide world, most worthy person in this whole wide world. Dying is gain because I get to be with Him. In that reality, when we are under the slavery and fear of death, you don't know how glorious Jesus is. You don't know how glorious God is because we are under the slavery or fear of death. But if you understand that death is not the end, that Jesus has overcome death, that we too will resurrect. That we, when we die, we're going to be with God forever and ever and ever and ever. Death becomes not the end, but death becomes the gate of eternity. That's why we don't fear death. We shouldn't fear death. That's why Jesus rose again, to show us how we ought not to fear death. How we ought not to fear failure. I can fail because Jesus conquered the death. You know, not proclaiming this news is the ultimate failure. 
I can freely fail? Because maybe I need to fail. Maybe I need to understand what it means to be rejected, to unidentify with Jesus who was rejected. I don't know, maybe there's so much maybes, but I don't want to live in the maybes. But because Jesus rose again, I can fail freely. It is okay to fail for reals. You know, like Thomas Edison said, you know, he invented the light bulb, right? right then what is the, the filament made of? You guys are kind of shy. What is it again, you know? Tungsten, right? And he tried so many other things, right? Then every time, like, oh, Edison, how do you feel now? You failed again. No, I just figured out what didn't work. What didn't work? What didn't work? But finally, he found out. Failure is okay. Because Jesus rose again from the dead. You know, and this is a huge news for us. You know, Christianity is not a bunch of optimistic stories that promote self-help. Small news. But Christianity is this big news that brings change about everything. About your life. Everything in your life is that big. Is that big. You know, if you came here today and asking for self-help, oh, I got so much stress, I got so much worries, I got so much this or that, you know, I got so much, you know, bump on the road in my life, you know, I'm like, is this what you're going to give me, that's all? Like, yes, I'm going to diss you, this is it, all you get? What is that? The big news. And when you embrace that big news, you will change everything about your life. <clears throat> well, that's my testimony. I thought people needed money. So I wanted to make lots of money. I wanted to have my own bank, you know, have, have my own insurance company, have, have my own engineering company, right? Young Concepts, remember that? Don't take my name. <laughs> and make lots of money and help people with money. But after I came to faith, I realized it's not money people needed, it is God. Okay. It is this news God needed because that news will change everything about your life. If that news has not been changing your life at all, you're not connected with that news. It's that small news. You got this priority mixed up. It's not the first importance. It's about hey, how to handle stress, how to get over these bumps in my life, how to get over my pimples, you know, or whatever it is, how to get a girlfriend or boyfriend. It's way bigger news about that. I'm so sorry if you came to you know, hear just about the self-help, but I guarantee you that when you embrace this big news of Jesus Christ who has come, died for our sins, and buried and rose again from the dead, if you embrace that, if you believe it, if you run to it, I guarantee you, uh, for sure, you'll get to hear those from testimonies how to overcome all these things. But the, that's not the primary. Primary, first importance, is this big news that ought to be proclaimed. It ought to be penetrating in our hearts. There ought to be for us to pursue it again and again and meditate upon that again and again. What it means that it's Son of God who comes and died for me. Who am I that God comes and died for me that he resurrected and conquering the sins of our lives and conquering the death, the biggest problem that we ever have. And that truth will how it will help us to live my life today. Amen? Amen? Amen. And that is the big news. Mm -hmm. That big news deserves to be proclaimed, heralded. And how that big news needs to be embraced and loved and meditated upon. And that news, taking residence in your life, I guarantee you, you will turn everything right side up. You will bring that joy and you will bring that love and peace and righteousness that we all need to live in this world. God does help us, but God helps us through the big news, not just dealing with the small news that we need to hear. All these small news is just like the other religion, and Christianity is not a, another religion. It is this big news. God came and died for our sins, and rose again. And that news will transform us again and again forever and ever. Amen? Amen. Come on. Amen? Amen. And I think we really need to embrace that. Because the Bible said it is the first important. Once last time, 
You really thought about God. God, Almighty God, who created the heaven and the earth, coming to this world, and having you in his, in his mind, and loving you, and thinking about you, and dying on the cross. But isn't it weird? That's, you know, when I began to church, it's kind of weird. What Christianity? They celebrate the cross where people die. Isn't it weird? It's weird, right? We've been kind of used to that, so it's not weird for you. But when I was going to church for the first time, like, it's so weird. It's like if we grew up in the 1800s, if Jesus came in the 1800s, we'd be not having a cross, but we'd be having a noose. <laughs> you know? Now we have our symbol. You know, pick up your noose daily, you know, and follow Jesus. <laughs> right? You know what noose is? Like a tie. You know, right? You know, because that's how it lynched people. Right? You know what I'm saying? But we celebrate cross because Jesus died for us. Son of God died for us. And he rose again. And that news, that fact, that truth, when it takes residence in our life, when that truth is meditated upon again and again and again and again, truth over again and again, I guarantee you, you will bring transformation in your life. Amen? So we want to have our testimonies. And um, this is the order. So, Like, when I went, I was like, oh my gosh, I get to, like, say 
what I want to say with my discernment, and I get to learn from other people and just grow with brothers and sisters. Like it's so, it was like I was like, oh my eyes were open, my ears were open, you know, I didn't like where I was going, and so that's when I rebuked my sin, and then so I, and, and then I had um, like I knew like theoretically God loves you, Jesus loves you, but when you feel it, oh, when you finally understand it, it was just. I broke down in tears, you know, <laughs> it was amazing, you know. And so I found this, you know, I dove into his word, and I rebuked my sins, and then here I am today, getting baptized. Amen. And so that is my testimony, and I am reborn, I am saved, I have a new creation. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Come on, son, come on! Disappointment, but um, 
around junior year, I started coming back to church more often, like not every week though, and I started praying more often, which really helped me when I was struggling, and I kind of learned to stop just giving um, short prayers, like, thank you Father for this food, you know? but I like actually started, you know, going on walks and saying my prayers out loud, not to like, not because God needed to hear my voice, but because I needed to hear my voice, um, it really helped me channel my true thoughts and feelings on him. And I used to think that the Bible was just like full of rules that would make you feel guilty when you didn't follow them. But like lately, I've been able to witness their purpose firsthand. And a lot of values I've learned from the Bible, like self control, conflict resolution, and humility, have really helped me personally and sometimes even the people around me. And I've shown working positive results. And I've been hesitant to let God. Um, fully reign in my life, but when I realized that there were too many things that I couldn't deal with, too many things I couldn't do on my own, you know, as a human, with all my clouded teenage logic, um, that's when I decided. And having youth group there to help me really helped a lot. They made sure that I came to church and house church and everything. And that I think that really, really helped me reconnect after being away. And even though I knew him, knew God my whole life, I never really felt like I was able to connect until this year. I, I had known about the message, I would known about his love, but I never understood it. Coming to church actively and being able to discuss things with other guys in the youth group and hearing more about God really helped strengthen me over the last year, and I'm 100% sure of my faith now, and I'm, I'm ready to declare my commitment and acceptance of Jesus into my life. Amen. Hallelujah. chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, or Christ is in them, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all the new things, or behold, all things have become new. And before I even read this verse, I, I even heard about it, I experienced this. Um, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about who I was, and who I am now, and who I'm going to be, um, eventually through, through my testimony. And Pretty much, I used to be <coughs> the chief of all sinners, okay? Um, I, I, literally, I, I, was a, I was a terrible guy. It's really sad to think about. Uh, I, I had a lot of hatred. I had a, a lot of evil in me. I broke my little sister's arm. I, I did really evil things. Um, I was a drug dealer. Um, I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic. Um, you know, I, I did terrible in school. Um, I only cared about myself, and I was I was trying to become my own god. I cared about materialistic things and whatnot. It was so bad that even the day that I, coming up to the days where I was getting saved, um, when when I felt this overwhelming spirit inside of me, even the day I was going to the retreat, I ended up smoking with one of my friends right before the retreat. That's how bad the addiction was. I. I even went to um, drug addiction classes and Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, that didn't help or anything like that. Um, so that's how bad it was. But when I went to the retreat, I really said, you know what, God, I, I just cried out. I said, I need you in my life. And he came into me. And that's when I experienced this. Everything became new that day because I came back that Sunday night. And even the temptation was there. I went to my car. I put marijuana in, in what I was going to smoke out of. And I knew it was the devil. Can I get a witness? Amen. Okay, so, so the discernment of that spirit just came into me, and I just knew I couldn't do it, so I just stayed away from it that night, and I just stayed with my friend because I knew I, he, he needs me, he needs God, um, and, and yeah, pretty much that's, that's who I used to be, and um, that overwhelming spirit just came into me, and um, once I found out, so I also want to read from Matthew 4, chapter 16, this is after his baptism, which is... Uh, as Jesus came out of the water, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. And this is even before Jesus has done anything. He hasn't even um, gone into his ministry, and God says, I have great joy in him already. Knowing that, that God had great joy in me, no matter what I've done already, no matter what I'm going to do, he still has great joy in me. It's just touched my heart. And Mark 16 says, um, 
He is risen from the dead. So he overcame all the sin, and sin causes death. The wages of sin is death. But he overcame all the sin. And um, yeah, it's just such a blessing to know um, that I have, I, I came into this family of Christ. And I would just like to thank not just one of you or not just a certain amount of you, but I would like to thank all of you because all of you guys have Jesus in you. And, and that's what I saw coming to church. I, um, before I, I came and uh, or before I went to uh, different churches, but nobody, I never really, 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 really saw Jesus in somebody until I met Edgar. Um, literally, I, 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 I met him, uh, and and something about him attracted me. Um, and and, uh, and later on, I found out. <laughs> later on, I found out that that it was Jesus. Jesus lived in him, and that's what attracted me towards him. And I came to Destino, just like Sal said, um, and I would like to read from 1 Corinthians 1.10. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with, uh, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there uh, be no division amongst you, but that you'll be perfectly united in mind and thought. And it's just such a blessing to know that. Most of us from Destino who haven't been baptized are getting baptized. We got Marco, I'm not even Sal, we got Joseph, we got Clay. It's just such a blessing, you know? um, Yeah, it's just, that's exactly what this talks about, you know? We're just perfectly united, and it's just, we're, we're making the biggest commitment. So right now, we're making the biggest, I think it's the biggest commitment in my life, because I'm just committing for sure, in front of all of you, in front of all you people, you, you could keep me accountable and say, Tony, you made that commitment to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and work for Him for the rest of your life. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm getting baptized, yo. So this is all showing me what I'm going to be for the rest of my life, which is uh, a father uh, and just be reborn in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
God that will lead me to a better life. And ever since then, I haven't been like so materialistic, and I've just been praying to God and going to church. And uh, it's one of my favorite uh, pastimes to spend time with God. You, yes. hallelujah. I'm ready to dedicate my life to God. Oh, yeah! What did you say, Ben? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Woo, Anaï! Anaï! Anaï!
so that I am able to have a precious, intimate relationship with my Heavenly Father. I accept your free grace. I accept your free gift. Sorry, I can't even see my paper. <laughs>
you know, uh, being around people who believe in the same things I do, uh, it definitely brings you closer back to God and, and just to feel that love again. And then I got to be pastor as well, and he shared a bunch of uh, knowledge with me, and basically I shared a, a very detailed, uh, um, like, positions of my testimony with him, and he understands a lot of where I came from, and has just, uh, you know, been a great mentor to me um, while I've been here in Slow. And then, uh, you know, there's, we're all looking for, for answers, and, uh, and we always question uh, things, and we always kind of never really feel like we fully have our answers, but all of our answers come from this right here. Yeah. So if you pick this up and you just feel that love and that, that true passion that the Lord has you know, instill in all of our hearts and just come together all as one, like in this great church here, you know, if we just all sit together as a community and just, you know, continue to practice our faith, nothing can stop us and we can bring more people closer to us uh, in faith and bring our disciples in and closer back to God. And, you know, I'm just internally grateful for this journey and, you know, it makes sense why this church is called Journey because this is a journey together. Uh, and journey together. And, uh, bless all of you. Thank you. Yeah. conquer the death. He is alive and well and working in, in these individuals' lives. Amen? Amen. I mean, it's a proof of that our Lord lives again and again and continues to live and continue to do amazing things in their lives, not just in their lives, but your lives as well. And those people's lives that who's not come to faith yet. That don't give up, pray for them. You can pray for them and talk to them. You can proclaim that Jesus is alive to them again and again with confidence because he has done amazing things and he will do amazing things until Jesus comes back. Amen. 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 You know, and so we really pray that news that Jesus has risen, that he is alive and well, will affect every one of you greatly. Knowing that God has given us a way to come to Him, for a way that God has connected with us, and you know, cleanse of our sins and give us eternal life and overcoming death and overcoming everything in our lives, troubles, obstacles, worries in small bumps, you know. And so instead of praying for them individually, you know, so when I baptize them, I'm gonna just be very simple as a oh, upon your confession, I baptize you in the name of the thing. So I've collected all together and came up with another uh, sermon. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but it's very short. Uh, but it's about them. It's about CWP. Christ Witness Program. Right? So everybody said that CWP. CWP. Yeah, Christ Witness Program. You know, as I look at college students, especially these who are getting baptized, you know, the world has hope. When I hear about collapsed roof, I don't have hope. <laughs> hope just goes away. <laughs> when I think about when we go to Del Playa or even Hathaway and, you know, people are half drunk and they're just, you know, I mean, like last Friday we went out there and it was like a little bit cold. I have a jacket, I have everything and these girls were wearing nothing. And when I look at that, I say, America don't have any hope. <laughs> but when I look at these guys, when I look at what God has been doing and is doing in your life, the world has hope because God is not dead. And God is alive and well. He is powerfully engaged us in a loving relationship. In, especially these individuals that warms my heart because I can only imagine the fruit that God will bear in you. So this fruit that, that God will bear uh, is for His glory, and that spells CWP. Everybody say CWP again. CWP. The first is C, thank you. First is C, which is the fruit of character. 
full of character. And our character is to be. Can you guys stand over there and look at me when you guys talk? <laughs> Uh, when I talk, stand over there on that side. Uh, this is for you guys, it's not for these people. <laughs> it's about character growth. It's for us to be more like Christ. It's not about doing things for God. Yes, we will do amazing things for the Lord. But it's about we connecting with God, God connecting us as a vine connects to the branch and how God uses us, through us, bears much fruit for the world for the world to enjoy. So that's our first fruit, that you ought to change like Christ. That you should look at Christ's picture every day through the word of God. And I ought to be like this because God <coughs> lives in me and I, I am becoming more like Christ each day. So as I shared with you guys yesterday, every day becomes exciting. Every day become an arena where God's fruit may be bare through us. So that's why there's no manic Monday. There's no sad Sunday you have to go to work. Every day is exciting. When you get up your life, when each day Amen. you get up, you're like, wow, what an exciting day. I can imagine what kind of fruit that God will bear in my life. Amen. And you guys are college students, so you can do that because sometimes you don't have class on Mondays. <laughs> so first seed is this Christ character. You know, I mean, it tells us love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But the second Peter 1, 5, 8 has a better list, or another list. Now for this very reason also, apply all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence, in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control. And in your self-control, perseverance. And in your perseverance, godliness. And in your godliness, brotherly kindness. And in your brotherly kindness, love. And if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? And that's the first thing. Moral excellence. And I want to really challenge you guys and pursue Christ in that, yeah. that you will bear fruit of being more like Jesus each day. So that's C. C what? C-W-P. W. W is fruit of continual witnessing. Continual witnessing. It's about making disciples of all nations. Yeah. You know, Second Peter, uh, Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.2 says this. I'm going to read from verse 1. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Endure hardship with, with, endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier Right, gets in, involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. And so what he's telling us is that continue witnessing and how God has uh, entrusted you this gospel, entrusted you this good news of Jesus Christ. Don't let it die with you. Share with others. Amen. Teach others and so that they can teach others and so that they can teach others and continue witnessing. And you must bear that kind of fruit of continual witnessing. Amen. Amen. So first C is character of Jesus. Second C is a continual witnessing. Right? And I can see amazing things God can do in your life. Not just you guys, you guys too. When's the last time you shared Christ? And do you wonder why I'm not growing? That's why you're not growing. You're not sharing Christ. In God's kingdom, you don't share, you don't grow. Amen. You don't give away, you don't grow. I guarantee you, as you continue to bear this continual witnessing, you will become more like Christ. C W P P P is praise through our lips. Through our lips. See Hebrews 13, 15 says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of lips that confess his name. You know, this is both personal and private and corporate thing. You know, as you pursue Christ and have that intimate relationship with God, your praising of God will grow. 
You will praise God in just random places, random times that as you live your life, because the reality of who you are, the reality of who Jesus is to you guys, will become so much real. And as that becomes real, more real in your life, you continue to praise Him because He's worthy of our praise. Amen? Amen. So, I challenge you, I beseech you in the name of Jesus to grow, to bear in this fruit of character of Christ, continual witnessing, and pray, unending praise unto Him. Amen? Amen. Alright, let's take offering. <laughs> <laughs> so while you take offering, we're going to go change, and I'll see you in maybe five minutes.
become better. Mm -hmm. Because look at how God has done in his life. Isn't it amazing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like in the last part, he said, like, I commit to Christ. Mm -hmm. Something like that, right? <laughs> 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 Fully, you know, in the name of Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. Clay, have you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Upon his confession that Christ, Jesus Christ, is his Lord and Savior, we baptize him in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
in your life. So praise team, can you come up and let's sing our praise last one song or two Josh songs? Or Josh, in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, got it. Yeah. Josh. I like Josh. Right. <laughs> so you know, when, when you're done, you dismiss them and we'll see you guys over there. Okay? Just dismiss it. Yeah. Uh, after, after oh, after that. Can we all rest in our